In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, our Lord and our God, the gratitude in our hearts to gather unto you this evening, knowing that you are the creator of the universe and all that there is in it. And we thank you for bringing us to see this day, this evening. We give you thanks for life, for health, for strength, for food, for drink, all the powers of body and soul. All that you have blessed us with, Lord, we are grateful unto you for them all. May your holy name be praised forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we ask for mercy. In every way we sin against you, in thought, word, and deed, that commission and omission, whether we remember them or not. Father, we are asking for mercy. Do not mark our iniquity, O God, for if you do, all of us will be lost. Father, with you is mercy, with you is forgiveness, with you is plenty of redemption. Deliver us, O God, from all our iniquities in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the blood of Jesus be released even now in the silences. Wash away every spot and wrinkle of sin anywhere in our lives. So that this evening, as we gather unto you here, and you look at us, Lord, we will not see any sin. Rather than praying, see us dressed in the white linen garment of your sins, the bride of Christ. May that be our portion, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And so this evening, Lord, we're asking that your spirit. What to whom we are gathered, that spirit will come down and teach us your word this evening. Help us to have a better understanding of your word. That our lives will be touched, that our lives will be changed, and we'll be better sons and daughters of yours. Hear this prayer, Lord. Bring it to pass in our lives. For in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. amen. I welcome all of you to this evening service. And I ask you to please turn your Bibles. To the book of Psalms, we thank uh, our sister who has joined us so early punctually, our sister El Shima. May God reward your sacrifice as well as all of you who are here right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Psalm 16. We want to read from verse 8 to 11. The book of Psalms 16, 8 to 11. Okay, are we there? Okay, read. I have said the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou would show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. This is the word of God 
Lord, as that God will continue to bless his word, bless the ears with which his children receive this word, and the heart into which we should go, it will go in, to bring about a change in our lives, even this evening and forever. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, this evening, we want to talk for just a little while on the subject matter which I have titled The Watching Eye. The Watching Eye. I think I don't need to tell you whose eye is that watching eye. I think it's obvious, you and I will know it, that except for unrestrained sons and daughters of Satan, by which I mean those who couldn't be bothered, they don't care less. It doesn't matter to them what we are saying about God and his word. Except for those ones, generally, people's attitude through what that is say the thoughts in their hearts, the words of their mouth, the actions they take, all of this generally depends on whether they think that God is around or there's an atmosphere in which we are talking about God or we are in service, we are watching God or something. For many of us, when we believe that God is present, for whatever reason, maybe because we are in service, or because we are in a place and everybody is talking about God, nobody is talking about uh, the world, the fashions, football, athletics, drinking, and things like that. When we find ourselves in that kind of situation, usually everybody behaves well. Everybody tries to put on the attitude of a believer. because perhaps of that fear in their hearts that God, God may be present in this atmosphere, let me not be an exception. So everybody will play good. But you know, nobody is deceived. Certainly not God. Look at the scripture we just read again. What is this saying? Verse 8 says, I have said the Lord always before me, because he's at my right hand. Remember, this is a psalm of David. So it's our father David who wrote this. I've said the Lord always before me, because it's my right hand, I shall not be moved. It's another one saying, I have kept the Lord in my mind continually.
and with him beside me, I cannot be disturbed. That is the impression that Father David was conveying in this uh, in this verse eight. And then in verse nine, he wrote, therefore my heart is glad and my glory is rejoiced. My flesh also shall rest in hope. See, my, therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also dwells secure. That's what he's saying. Then goes on. In verse 11, that will show me the path of life in thy presence. That will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy, and thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. What is he saying? He's saying, you, God, will reveal the path of life to me. You will give me unbounded joy, joy that does not have bounds, that does not have limits. In thy presence, in the presence of you, God, At your right hand are delights that will endure forever. This is what our Father did. He's saying, Now, this thing that he has written, can it apply to me? Can it apply to you? Some of you will say, ah, it's a scripture now, so uh, it's above us. It's not above us. David said, John, but just a man like me, a man like you. There's nothing special about him. He's just another human being. Subject to temptation, subject to sin, just like you and me. But there is the difference, and that that he has absolute faith and confidence in God, and was ever willing to follow Him. Listen to what God's prophet to the age said, by Brown. So when a man thinks God is gone. He will curse. He will lust after women. He will steal. He will cheat. He will lie. He will do anything where he thinks that God doesn't see him. But bring him to the presence of God he stop it right there. So, you see, the average human being, just imagine in the, in the office now, he would lie. He would tell dirty jokes. She would tempt her boss. When she speaks on the phone, whosoever she is speaking with, she's lying. It does not matter to her. 
in the marketplace, she's quarreling. Using her hey, hey, you know, go better for you, your father, your mother, all such cousins, you go raising her people. When it is not time to go to church, is to go to work, to go to a party, she will wear the dress that she will not wear to church. The dress that will show part of her breast. The dress that is so short that when she bends down to pick a paper on the ground, you see all her underwear. Or she will wear one that is so transparent, you see everything she's wearing under. You see the brother, when he's going out there, he's wearing a type of shirt that will show all the tattoo in his body. But when he's coming to church, he will wear a shirt that covers all of that. If shirt cannot cover it, you put on a jacket to cover it. That's on Sunday. But the previous day, Saturday, and the night before Saturday, Friday, the same brother was in the nightclub, drinking, smoking. If he's married, he's there with a girl, a girlfriend. If he's not married, he's there with somebody who called girlfriend, who he will take home after the party that night, after the night club. And then on Sunday morning, when he's coming to church, the girl will either be still waiting for him in the house, or the girl will quickly run back to her own place. And then he will come to church, and he will pay holy, holy. What is happening? He is thinking no one is seeing him. But what we are saying this evening is that whatever you are doing, whatever I'm doing, there's an eye watching us. And there's no way we can escape the scrutiny of that eye. That eye is there, it will always be there. But what we are doing is that we are living in hypocrisy. We are hypocrites. When we are coming to church, we are holy. And when it has nothing to do with church, then we belong to the world, and if we belong to the world, then it means we belong to the devil. Who is the seed? The Bible says in Galatians, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Nobody can mock God. The Bible says, what a man sows, that he will surely reap. The reason why we behave like this is because we are not staying in the presence of God all the time. In the scripture we read this evening, our father David said something different. He said here, I have set the Lord always before me. What he says that at any particular time in his life, he is conscious that God 
is there and is watching see God as one man and then we say hey, we are 8 billion human beings on this earth how can this one man go around us so you just assume that uh, he's not around you where you are then he can be around somebody else but for me you know they here that is the seat this God you and I are gathered on to this evening he is omnipresent. That is, he fills all the entire universe, not the earth. Earth is only like a grain of sand. What we call the universe, the earth is part of the universe. And in terms of the universe that God created, the earth, in terms of size, is just like a grain of sand. Yeah, this whole universe that this God created, he is there in every little 24, 7, 365 days. He's there. It doesn't matter where you go, whether it's in the sea, on the sea, in the land, in the air, wherever. He is there. So it's not sheer foolishness for you to think that, yes, your contact with God is when you come to church. And therefore, when we are coming to church, you want to be at your best. And once you leave the church, you go back to who you are because you say, hey, God is not here. So I can do what I like. On Sunday now, I'll go back to him. I'll be here. You are deceiving yourself. All of us know what is called the tape recorder. And we all know how to use it. It's not our own idea. God's tape recorder was there right from the moment of creation. Everything that you and I think, I didn't say still, everything we think is recorded. Everything we say is recorded. Everything we do is recorded. If you like, let me put it this way. There's a huge camera that covers everybody and everywhere. It never moves away. And this camera, it takes, it takes more than uh, your X-ray, more than your C-scan and your ultrasound or whatever you call it. This camera sees what is in my heart sees what is in your heart. He records it. If a good one is there, but if it's wrong one, which is sin, it remains there for you. Hey, some of you say, no, I don't have to. Let me tell you. When you got to a friend, Calls you, or your mother calls you, or your father calls you, and you are in Ikoi, and your mother has sent you to go to Surulere, and instead of going to Surulere, you decide to come to Ikoi first. And then your mother calls you, you pick the phone, ah, mommy, how are you, mommy? And mommy says, hey. So you don't reach through later now. You say, yes, but we have to reach through later now. OK, my begin. I try to finish the matter and come. Say, yes, ma'am, I will come, I will come back. But where are you? Because to you, you have guided your mother. Sorry. You have guided your mother, yes, but you have not guided God. He stepped, has stepped you where you lied to your mother and unless you confess that sin hmm, you know what it is to confess that sin it's not enough to go and say to god oh god i'm sorry okay 
A woman called me that uh, yesterday. I told her I was in Koi. In fact, I was in Sui. I was in where well, I was in Sui there. When I was in Koi, God, I know what I did was wrong. And I, I'm sorry, forgive me in Jesus' name. Uh, give me the blood of Jesus. Let him wash me clean now in Jesus' name. And you say, yes, okay, now you are free. Eh, eh, you are not free. That's your confession is good. Eh? But that sin is still there. Until you go back to your mother and say, mommy, you remember that day you called me, asked me whether you sent me to Sudan. And after I called me, I said, where are you? I said, mommy, I'm a school daddy. I said, mommy, it was a lie. I was in the cold. Lord, please forgive me. It is only when you have done that, that God will now wipe your, your slate clean of that sin. Otherwise, that sin is still there. Don't die, yo, because if you die, that sin is waiting for you, and it will lead you away from heaven. Many of us think that Heaven is cheap. And that this God we are serving is cheap. It is not so. The churches cannot preach the truth. Most of the churches don't preach the truth. Because if they do, they will lose members. And if they lose members, they will lose money. Because many people are behind the pulpit today who are after money. And that is why there is this corruption in the church. Because we have decided to make church a place of business. And when we know the things that are bad, we refuse to preach it so that they will say, ah, oh, too much, I don't come to this place. We can go to that place. When you begin to see them, their church is numbering hundreds of thousands of people. Make you, make you try and look well, shine your eye very well. It may well be that the things are not good. They're not saying the correct thing there. I'm not saying always, so, but generally that is what it is. To go to heaven, you cannot pass through. Those who are passing through the wide gate, Jesus said they are getting straight for destruction. For heaven, it is through the narrow way. Where as you are entering into this, you to be cutting your body self as you are entering, and those are going to enter heaven finally. My dear children of God, our Father David here said, I have said the Lord always before me. Because it's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. David has created a situation in his own life whereby he believed that at any particular moment, God by his spirit is around him. And so you'll be afraid to mess up. Uh, some of you say, eh, ah, well, it's not uh, Moses that uh, took the, the wife of Uriah, eh? and, 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 and then, uh, sorry, David. Was well, it not David that took the wife of Uriah and then killed the old man? But now, Sister George, Brother George, David did it, he was sorry. And he did the rest of his life fearing God, staying in God's presence. All of us have sinned. And if you are telling me, look at me, I say, Daddy, I'm not a sin, no. Yes, I say, okay, I present to you a liar because you're a liar. Mm -hmm. But let's be like David. Let's create that atmosphere of consciousness of God's presence in our lives. That at any particular moment, we believe that God is present in our lives. When we allow that consciousness to run in our lives, then we begin to be very careful what we think. Because we know that God will judge our thoughts. We begin to be very careful what we say because we know God will judge our words. We begin to be exceptionally careful what we do because God, we know, will judge our actions. But you're never going to do that unless 
you allow that consciousness to be in your own head, in your own mind, in your own heart, that God is present around me. Only those of you who have sold that completely to the devil, then they don't care. They'll tell you about God. I better forget that, but who has God? Those ones, they don't care about any consciousness of God around them. But God will not let you and me to be like that in Jesus' name. Amen. However, you have you who have answered Amen now. I'm asking you, have you succeeded in building that consciousness around you? That every moment of your life, you believe that God is near, that is there, all around you, that is spirit. And so you be very careful what you think, very careful what you say, very careful what you do. Have you got to that stage in your life that you are like that? If you haven't got there, I'm not saying that therefore you are condemned now. No. What I'm saying to you, therefore you know that there's work for you to do. And that work cannot on your own. You have to get all and go. Father, I, have, I know now what to do. Come and teach me how to do it and help me to do it in the mighty name of Jesus. He will listen to you. He will listen to you. But don't come and pretend that, oh, it doesn't matter. It matters. For if you are not that way, you'll be in trouble. You'll be in trouble. You know, we must always allow the word of God to guide us. Let us be like David. We have to be like David. Otherwise, nothing is going to work. David was so much like that that God called him the man after my own heart. And yet he was just an ordinary man like me and you. God did not give birth to David specially, no. But by the way he lived his life, God called him the man after my heart. Do you think that David is the only one that should be man after God's heart? You and I also can be called like that by God. If we will do like David did, finish. And God will call us, and we, we, we look at it, we look at us that same way too. But for us to be like that, we have to know that it, 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 it entails sacrifice. What is the sacrifice now? Is it come and give God money? Rubbish. Does God need your money? Do you have money? Why are you deceiving yourself you have money? What did you come to this world with money? All of us came here with what? Nothing. And it is certain, the Bible says, when we are living here, we are living with nothing. Empty we came, empty we will depart. So when you are beginning to say, eh, I'm, I'm rich, I have money, but well, fine. But just know, see, all your mansion. All your aeroplane, private jets, the big cars, huh? all of them bulletproof. They are nice, so if they give you, don't reject your take. I'm not saying, I'm not preaching for that. God never said, Come and be poor. But if you want to reach, make sure you are rich in the correct way that that money you can bring it to God. But if it's Yahoo Yahoo money or ritual money, please don't bring it to church because you are going to get cursed from God. But all of these switches, after you've gotten them, how is it going to end? If you are fortunate, you see your body, it will end six feet inside the tiny little box called coffee. They don't like to use the word coffin again today. What's the wrong one they call it now? 
Hein? Casquette. Casquette. <rire> Ou bien quoi? Colonne. What the difference? Where the tap, the pap water, or pap itself, one and the same thing. All of that you obtain is going to end up six feet underground. What happened to your riches? It doesn't belong to you. That's why you left it behind and you are traveling away. If it's your own, you are taking it to you. It's not yours. So God did not send me a here to this end because of riches. But he will give us riches. If that's what he wants for us, he will give us riches. Yeah. But the, 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 our purpose of coming here is not for riches. It's for us to live our lives in such a manner that we win acceptance in his sight. And when we win acceptance in his sight, then he will give us his spirit that he himself who is the Holy Spirit, he will now come and live inside of us. Then we know that God is living inside of you. He's living inside of you. But how many of us today truly can say that God is living inside of us? And yet we go to church. What do we do immediately after we leave church? As you are the bus stop waiting, there are people there. Everybody trying to get into the bus. Somebody now comes and just with his boot, steps on your feet. Bam! What do you say? You who are just coming, coming from service now. They say, you are foolish. Only you that, you know, go better for your mama. Yeah, Christian, and you are coming from church. If you are aware that God is present around you, you will not talk like that. You will just say, uh -uh, Why do you step on my feet? Why? Did you see me? If that person is a child of God, say, hey, I'm sorry, please forgive me. If it's a child of God, say, get out, I don't care. Then you now you say you are judged. Say, you don't care. Today I'll, I'll teach you a lesson now. Because I'm coming for church, you think that will stop me. Because of this Bible, what do you to me? Pack up, open up, put the Bible, say, oh, yeah, me and you now. Are you, is God around you? Do you have that consciousness that God is around? Just see how many times we mess God up in this way of our behavior. And then when they say, how many people are going in rapture? I say, hey, I'm going in rapture. Because you think God is cheap, eh? No, God isn't cheap. Heaven isn't cheap either. Just look what it costs God to give me a new salvation. Look at the Calvary cross. Look at that sacrifice of Calvary. God, creator of the universe, coming to take, put himself in the flesh of man and then to be so disgraced by man. Crucified, stuck naked. On a hill, that when you are two miles away, three miles away, you'll be seeing him stuck naked. Bleeding, all because of love for me and for you, so that we can get into heaven. And after you have gone through all of that, then you now say, hey, I'll go to dance in heaven by just dancing and drinking and smoking and messing up with my body and stealing and lying and cursing and doing all of these things. It will not work. Let us take away all these things from our hearts. God came to do all of that in the flesh, we call it Jesus Christ, to show us the way 
And therefore, if we are going to make heaven, we have to go along that same way. There is no shortcut to heaven. There's only one way. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way. If anybody shows you another way, please don't follow them. Because they don't know what they are saying. So my dear children of God, David, our father, had written. He was so confident in verse Verse 9. So therefore, my heart is dry and my glory rejoices. My flesh, my flesh also shall rest in hope. My flesh shall rest in hope. What was David saying there? He was saying that he was certain in his mind that even after he has died, after he has died and has been buried, he said, I don't, I don't know how it's going to come about, but I know that my body shall resurrect. That is the hope. He was that confident. I ask you, as I ask myself, I don't pray that it should happen to us. But if for any reason we die this night, while we are still alive this evening, and death will come in the night, how much hope do you have that when it is time for rapture, that your body be there among those? That Paul said, the dead in Christ shall rise first, that you be among them. This evening, are you able to strike your heart and say, yes, I know for certain, if I die this night on the day of rapture, I'll be among those who will rise in accordance with 1 Thessalonians 4. Can you say that? If your answer is, I'm not sure. I'm not sure simply means no. Because in this business, you are either sure or you are not there. So think that that's, you have yes, I'm not sure, no. Uh -uh. It's either yes or no. I'm not sure it's not there at all. So which one is it for you? Can you strike your heart this evening and say, even if I die tonight, I know that if I is going to come in five years' time, my body will rise in accordance with first Thessalonians 4. Can you say that right this moment as you are listening to this literal exhortation? If your answer is a definitive yes, and you are not lying to yourself, deceiving yourself. If you are not, it's a definitive yes. Praise God that you know that you are going to be like, like uh, our father, uh, David. You are going to rest in hope. Then see what happens in verse 11, verse 10. For thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. This verse 10 is actually a prophecy concerning Jesus. That when he will die, he will be buried. But his father, God, will not allow his body to see corruption, that he will not allow the body to decay, for which reason he will rise from the dead. He will raise up on the third day, because after the third day, the body begins to decompose. So that was actually a prophecy concerning, concerning the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
But even when he was writing it, what I did with the, uh, I'm talking about, because he wrote this psalm, he was also saying that his own body will not rot. He was convinced himself that sometime after he's dead, he doesn't know how, but he knows that God is going to bring up his body from the dead. And he was also a human being like, like me and you. Writing with such confidence. So we need to develop the same confidence as our father, David. He was aware that God was always around him. And so, God being around him was always keeping him and directing every item, every item of his life. in all situations. And in that way, he was actually testifying to a New Testament statement by Christ, even though that was Old Testament. But you see, in New Testament, God, in the form of Christ, told us in Matthew 6.33, Seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That is how we are going to make it through. Yes, every other thing will be added after that. But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You can only enter the kingdom of God when you make the rapture. Fail to make the rapture. Fail to be in the kingdom of God. Nobody. Make the rapture, then you mean the kingdom of God. And for you to make the rapture, for me to make the rapture, we must seek the righteousness of God. Who is the righteousness of God? Christ. And he came here. That righteousness of God has to do with keeping the word of God, the laws of God. And so Jesus Christ came here and he now did what no man could do. He completely met all the laws of God. 613 of them. When we talk about the law of God, all of you think about the Ten Commandments. That's not correct. In the Bible, there are 613 commandments of God. And Jesus Christ fulfilled all of them for us. That's why he's our righteousness. And all he's asking you and me to do is, I'll bake the cake for you. Come and cut your own slice and you go to take it. I've done it for you. Even at that, many of us are not able to do it. And we can't do it, and we also say we can now enter into God's kingdom. We know God bless you. It cannot work. You must, you must have that righteousness to go in. Whether we like it or not, that's how it is. Let me read something to you from our God's prophet messenger to this age. Now listen, church, I love you. And I want you to listen to me now. I'm going to say something. Nobody is Brabram now. Always put the Lord before you. And don't you do nothing that you wouldn't do in his presence. 
want to repeat what I said. the Lord for you, and don't you do nothing that you wouldn't do in his presence because he is watching over you. The Lord is encamped about those who fear him. He just stays right near you. And he knows everything you are doing. And you must recognize that. You must recognize that he knows everything that you are doing, you are saying, that you are thinking. And so when you start to tell a lie, don't do it. Remember that God is listening to you. If you start to do a little cheat, that is to cheat a little, don't you do it. God is looking at you. If you start to take his name in vain, don't do it because he's listening to you. If you start to smoke a cigarette, don't do it. He's watching you. I add this, if you start to wear worldly clothes, stop it. He's watching you. If you start to listen to worldly music and to dance to worldly music and dance in the way of the world, stop doing it. God is watching you. If you start to deceive so as to get by in any place, stop doing it because God is watching you. Let the uh, admin put that song, that first verse, the first stanza of that song that we used to sing. Let it be on the platform now. We used to sing that song. You could know that I don't have a voice, so I can't sing. But you can see that uh, thing there. Please put it up for us. All I know on the road to the soul's true and bold. That's an eye watching you. It's tell that you take this great eye is awake. That's an eye watching you. Then, of course, you know the chorus yourself. Watching you, watching you. So you have to be very careful. That eye is there. It is watching me. It is watching you. Stay always in God's presence. That's my advice to every one of us. When you're still always in God's presence, there is just no way for Satan to come in, to sneak in to your life and to lead you astray. But always remember, you can take it away, take it off, but always remember, Remember always that unseen eye. That unseen eye, which is God's own eye, that unseen eye is there, watching all of us. It is ubiquitous. That unseen eye watching over us is ubiquitous. It covers the entire universe that he created. It's the eye of God. He's watching us, 
and it is keeping the record of what is watching. And the day will come where we'll have to give account based on this record, whether I like it or not, whether you like it or not. That unseen eye is there, is watching over us everywhere and at every moment. There is not a single moment that is free of the watching of this eye. Even as we sit here, we are listening to the word of God. What I'm thinking in my heart, what you are thinking in your heart, he, this unseen eye is watching it, he's seeing it, and this recorder is recording it all, even though you haven't opened your mouth to say anything. Ah, but my pastor never told me this before. I'm sorry for you. Whether your pastor told me before or not, it does not concern God. It's in his word. So if your pastor did not tell you, this, your pastor stop you when you are told, when you are at work, when you are relaxing for reading the word of God, so I will see that which your pastor did not tell you. Nobody is going to appear before the judgment seat of God and is going to preach. Ah, God, it's because my pastor didn't tell me, oh, oh, he told me this thing, I don't know it is wrong, go. He no go walk. Let your main partner in life be the word of God. We are at the end time. We are at the end of the end time, whether you like it or not. If it's annoying you, well, but whether you like it or not, we are at the end of the end time. There are only a few more years left for the rapture like. And if the unseen eye is watching you and you are not meeting with his requirement, well, when that day comes, you yourself, you know where you will go, boy. So let us remember to record with the own eye always. So that any hope we may have concerning the rapture will be that we are not just dreaming, daydreaming about it. It must be real. May God help us to remember every moment of our lives that unseen eye that is watching over us. And may he help us by his spirit to live a life that, 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 like, like that of our father David, whereby we have consciousness of God that is always around us, watching over us, watching over every, our thought, every thought of us, every word of us, every action of us, ensuring that they are in line with the word of God. May that be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank God because we know you have answered us today by teaching us this. May he help us who have listened to it. May he help us to stand firm, believe his word, and receive grace to do this work. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Father, in the name of Christ Jesus, your children, we come thanking you for this evening. Thanking you for talking to us. Thanking, thanking you for teaching us your word by your spirit. Father, where we already are not getting it right, Lord God Almighty, by giving us your word, will you help us by the power of your spirit, changing our lives that we begin to do it right now by your grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we desire to go in the rapture. We do not want to, be, need to miss the rapture. We don't want to go to hell. We want to be your children through and through. Papa, come and help us all to be in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Every weight, every sin, every sinful weakness still besetting us and defeating us. Father, come and fight this battle for us and give us victory over them all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let the blood of Jesus Christ be there always to cleanse us and the Spirit of God help us to stand firm so that the enemy will not have power over us anymore, to be anymore in our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you, Lord, because you know you have answered our prayers. Blessed be thy holy name, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
And Father God, we commit the rest of this evening to your hand. Be with us, Lord. Your children will be night visit. Be with them, hear their prayers. All those who are going back to go to their homes, be with them. Do not allow Satan to envelop us in his own ways. Rather, let your spirit envelop us, O God Almighty, and give us the right thoughts so that our minds will begin to be in line with your mind, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. bless the work of our hands. Let help us to prosper, but not allow prosperity to lead us away from you. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. every ailment, illness, sickness, and disease troubling us, you are the healer. Jehovah Rapha is your name. Come, O Father God Almighty, and bring healing to our bodies. And remember your children, the poor and the needy, especially because they don't even know that you are the healer, and many of them don't even have money to see a doctor. Father, we stand in the gap for them, begging you God, to bring healing to them, wherever they may be, whoever they may be, whether we know them or not, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered our prayers. Blessed be thy holy name. Amen. For in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Bless this country, Nigeria, Amen. and bring it out of the mess in which it is. All those who are troubling the security of this country, Father, pour down your hands upon them. And save this country, even for the sake of your children, calling on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Be with your land, Israel. All the machinations of the world and against Israel must fail. Give Israel and always a miraculous victory in every situation and circumstance. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Arise, O Lord God, and come down and show us thy mercy. For the time to favor Zion. And we pray, Lord, in all we've committed to your hands in our lives, that this be the time to favor us all in all of them, be they spiritual or temporal. For ye, the Satan is come, and you have set it so Lord. Let it be a portion in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Receive the priestly blessing. The Lord bless and keep you. Amen. Let his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Amen. Lord, lift his countenance upon you. Lord bless his Amen. children. His blessing is the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Amen. We thank God for the end of this service, and I thank all of you who have joined us. Our sister Shima, our mother, Mama, in Abana, 